All right, it's official. Maurizio Sarri and Juventus are no more. Mark Ogden's joining me for this one to try and make sense of it, even though, Augie, I suppose there's not much sense to make of it because we know how Juventus have wanted the Champions League. They brought in Cristiano Ronaldo to win the Champions League and they've still been unable to do so. So when that final whistle blew last night, the writing was on the wall, wasn't it? It was, yeah. And, you know, I think Maurizio Sarri was very lucky to get the Juventus job in the first place. You know, he was on the way out at Chelsea last year. Chelsea were, were going to sack him anyway, despite winning the Europa League. And he'd never won a trophy prior to winning the Europa League with Chelsea. So he was very lucky to get the Juventus job. And I think that's been borne out. They, they won the league again for the ninth time in a row. But by one point, they just about won the, the Serie A title. So they basically won it in spite of Maurizio Sarri, not because of him. And I think, you know, his... He has a lot of admirers for his Sarri ball tactics, which he, he, he turned Napoli into a great team, but Napoli didn't win anything either. And at Juventus, you have to win. And I think, you know, his flaws were exposed on, on Friday night when, when Leon, you know, albeit very fortunate with a, a very strange penalty, Leon knocked them out of the Champions League and this was the massive chance for Juventus to win the Champions League. And he blew it. So he was lucky to get the job in the first place and he was lucky to last so long. So his sacking makes no surprise whatsoever to me. And even though, of course, a lot of the blame can be let, laid at the feet of Maurizio Sarri, I mean, even Juventus' stats, I suppose, in Syria, despite winning it this season, were, was not as, they weren't as strong as probably in other seasons as well. There's also just the, the, the criticism, I suppose, towards the board and whatnot, the fact that they've been throwing money at the problem and probably throwing money to get players that just aren't the quality that Juventus need alongside a Cristiano Ronaldo to win this Champions League title. Do you... Would you lay the blame as well somewhere else too, probably, like I said, to the board? Well, they did really well last year getting Matthias De Ligt from, from Ajax when the whole of Europe wanted De Ligt. Well, you know, Paul De Ligt has gone there with a great reputation as an emerging defender and played for a guy like Sarri who can't coach a team to defend. So De Ligt's had a year under, under Sarri where he's, he's probably gone backwards because he's, he's playing for a coach who just doesn't concentrate on defending. So it's probably the board's fault for appointing him in the first place. It did, look, the board should have gone for a, a more proven manager, I think, than Sarri. It, it's... You know, but Sarri, they've made the decision now. I think what happens now is, do they go for a gamble again or do they go for something that they know will deliver the 10th in a row next year and maybe win the Champions League? Because by winning it by a point ahead of into this year, they've had a warning now that their dominance in Italy might not last forever. So, you know, they have to look at next season. I think there's two obvious candidates for me. That's Maurizio Pochettino and, and Pippo Inzaghi, who's at Benevento. All right, Augie, well, you just mentioned two names there. Which of the two managers would be your preference, I suppose, to go to Juventus for this one? Because they still do have the superhuman that is Cristiano Ronaldo. So, of course, they would look at building the team around him. However, you know, we are coming to the end of a Cristiano Ronaldo career. So how much time have they got to get it together to get him this Champions League title at Juventus? I think Ronaldo's probably got one more shot at it, you know. We, I mean, we've said that for the last four or five years, haven't we? So it does seem to carry on forever. But I think there's two obvious choices. I think there's Mauricio Pochettino for a start. Now, for me, he's out of work. He, he won't need any compensation package. And he's in the past, I was at a press conference in, in Turin a few years ago when Tottenham played there. And he made a big thing of saying his family, his ancestors came from Piedmont, the area in Italy, which is Turin's base. So... I think Pochettino to Juventus would be a great move for him. It would give him a chance to win a major trophy, a massive club like Juventus. I think he'd be great for Juve as well. He's a guy that has shown how to you know, build a young, exciting team at Tottenham. The other, the other candidate is, is Pippo Inzaghi, who you know, he's done really well at Benevento. He's taken to promotion to Serie A this season, the champions of Serie B. A former Juventus player, highly rated coach in Italy. You know, he's managed at the big clubs like Milan as well. So you know, Inzaghi would go back, would know the club. You know, I think it would be impossible for him to turn Benevento, to turn Juventus down, despite what he's done at Benevento. But I think, you know, Pochettino for me is the obvious candidate because he, he's available and, and he's there. The, the other, I think there's one potential outside candidate, and I'd say Roberto Mancini, who obviously is the coach of Italy right now. He managed Inter, won, you know, had great success with Inter, had great success with Man City when he won the Premier League with them. He can be a bit of a divisive character, Mancini, but it. You know, if there's a sense that Mancini is getting frustrated with Italy and if they want a guy to win Serie A, Mancini would be a candidate, but he's managed Inter, so Inter managers aren't very popular in Turin. So I, th I think for me, it's Pochettino or Inzaghi.